Hey guys, welcome back to Ancient Amnesia Podcast. I'm Josh, your host. I'm glad you're here. Um, I hope you've been enjoying the content we've been releasing. We have a lot of stuff uh, in the pipeline, so stay tuned because um, we're going to be pretty busy this year. We're going to try to keep up. We have a lot of guests lined up, and I think you're going to enjoy kind of the stuff that we are uh, going to be pumping out here. Really exciting show today. Uh, you may have heard of him. Very popular. His name is Dr. Richard Allen Miller. Uh, he has a long and extensive resume in the field of physics, metaphysics, and agriculture. Um, he uh, has done uh, work on s uh, the state of physics to the states of consciousness. Um, you've probably heard him on Red Ice, other programs. Really interesting guy. I would say that out of anybody that I've heard on interviews, I really enjoy uh, listening to him because you can really talk about pretty much everything. Um, and so today we're going to really dig in and ask him a lot of really cool questions and hope we can get through all through it all in time and probably just kind of release them as, um, as uh, small shows one by one. Uh, he's been involved in research projects, many at top secret level. Um, he's um, been in the research of paranormal and uh, he was a graduate physicist that worked 11 years with Navy Intel in anesthesiology. Please check out his books. This is, um, really where I want people to go and find his research. Uh, the conversations that we're having tonight are all uh, detailed and descriptive in his books. So please go to his website, Dr. Uh, it's actually Richard Allen Miller.com and check it out. He's got a lot of really fun stuff on his website and we're going to post a link in the YouTube video and also um, on our Facebook page once we release this. Um, show. So please check him out. He's really awesome. I know a lot of the stuff he says may be um, stuff you haven't heard before, but um, you know, I, I would encourage you to really have an open mind because um, even if half of what he says is, uh, is true, it's quite astounding. And it's definitely going to make you start thinking about reality and your life and consciousness and, and all other things. And that's what we're about here. We want to really stretch our minds and, and just you know, uh, talk about the potentials. So I hope you enjoy the show and uh, stay tuned for more. But, um, but I have a lot of questions because I, I, what's happening now in physics, what's happening now um, in what we're talking about magic and also uh, psychedelics and everything, I, I think what, what would help people is to start from the, the very beginning. I want your opinions on uh, the actual space-time beginning. We talk about the Big Bang. I did a podcast on God and the Astronomers, uh, which was Robert Jastrow's book when they discovered that, that, that they could find everything to a point and it had to, had to have been this point of creation and it, fr it freaked them out. What is your idea about um, the origins of the universe, the multiverses, the Big Bang? Is it, is it at the original event and is one of series of an events? What can you tell us about the very, very beginning of this universe uh, in, your, in your opinion? Yes. <laughs> I want. We're we're gonna start from the beginning. I just can't hear. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Um, <laughs> time and space are not real. They're constructs in the way the human mind can function. It needs. They're related. Uh, I just last night. When you go very fast, approaching the speed of light. Time changes. That means time and space are related to each other. Now, they're constructs because time isn't real. It is a duration of consciousness. And children and adults experience time differently. And we make distinctions of time when it's vulgar and uh, what we call um, sacred, going from the profane into the sacred, where something like lovemaking, uh, an event or an experience becomes timeless. And it has nothing to do with time anymore. What you're doing is you're in the moment. Did time begin at, at the Big Bang? Did Big Bang... Time create? isn't real. Time is not real. Is not real. Let me give you another example. Um, what color is that behind you? And you would say, well, this thing that I'm doing, I made it uh, uh, puke green, uh, you know, whatever, right. 
Uh, but you're making an assumption uh, that you can't see the other side of it. Like the fence. You say, well, the fence is brown, but you've made an assumption. In physics, you start with assumed truth. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. It's not necessarily a straight line uh, because we now, in quantum mechanics, are solid state physics, to be more precise, crystal studies. We have event horizons, precursor waves, and uh, uh, the idea that uh, space is curved, that you can somehow tunnel from here to there rather than having to go through space. And the fact is that it's neither, that's just the way you can conceive of it at this century because of your limitations on concepts. And when I say that, multidimensional, I mean, how many dimensions does the uh, universe have? Well, it went from hyperdimensional mathematics with Dr. Charles Muses to string theory. And string theory said, oh, well, there's nine dimensions and the interconnecting ones, so there's 10 dimensions. And then Kaufman came up with knot theory, where you take a string and you tie a knot in it, and specifically, if it's a knot like a bowline, then it pulls the universe this way. And if you tie it as a slip knot, then it pulls it that way. And space, time, relationships change. Space and time. And so quantum mechanics basically took a particle or a wave and said they were the same. Now, is it a particle or a wave? And is the Earth flat or is it round? And the correct answer is yes. Mm. If you make assumptions, I can, with simple tensor math, prove the Earth's flat if you make an assumption that the shortest distance between two points is not a straight line and that space is curved. If you say space is curved, I can prove to you with math, simply, that the Earth's flat. Now, is it flat or round? Mm. And the correct answer is yes, because... What you've done is taken an analog system and digitized it into particles, quantumized, quantum. That's why they call it quantum entanglement and quantum decoherence. Those are the two problems. And what that means is that the more you know about one thing, the less you know about something else. That's the uncertainty principle. And so rather than measure everything in space-time, we're going to leave quantum universes over here. And we're now going to do holographic universes where we talk about fractal math and the way information falls down into or out of itself. And the way you would understand that metaphor, well, you have your physical plane and then the emotional plane, how you feel about the physical plane. That means this has got more information than that. It's how information falls down into or out of itself. But that has its limitations. Because in information theory, so instead of having decoherence and entanglement over there in quantum, now in a holographic system, we have resolution and, uh, of, and uh, 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 information and resolution of the information, layers of how the information scale. But in information theory, there is a theorem that states the more you know about one thing, the less you know about another, that's quantum. So then you go over here, you say, if you have enough information to ask a coherent question, you have enough information to answer it. In other words, it is the framing of the question where the answer lies. Right. And so, okay, that's a limitation. Right. Can't get out of there from here. You understand? Right. It's like a wet paper bag. Now, with that said, all of our constructs are limited because we're not God. That's why in a more uh, existentialist point of view, I would state you can experience God, but you can't know him. Yeah. Just like you can experience the fence over there, but you can't know the fence because you can't see the other side. It's like that Indiana Jones movie where she comes out on stage and says, anything goes. Mm. What you conceive of as God, time and space, time travel, dimensions, is only halfway to God. And what yeah. that is, is what you can achieve in this lifetime if you're 
chose to turn your brain on and use all of their full potential as in a human being. And guess what? There are four cetacean on this planet that have technologies beyond man. 